Hello, everyone. I'm Uncle Han Zi. I've been involved with Chinese for 50 years. The charm of Chinese characters lies in the story behind each character. In this new season, my friend Adam and I will go to various places in China and interpret characters from the daily lives of Chinese people. Understanding Chinese characters will help to understand the real life as we journey around China. Hi, I'm Adam. Though I am a licensed teacher, I'm also a lifelong learner. I love learning new things. It keeps me fresh. I think it helps me to be a better teacher. Here's the problem: my shortcoming is in linguistics. Honestly, I'm grateful for being able to speak, read, and write in my native tongue, English. You know, I've been living in China for eight years. My wife is Chinese. I have little kids who know more Chinese phrases and characters than I do. I can't seem to wrap my brain around the language, and this malady has lessened the quality of my life here in China. It really is embarrassing. So, I have called upon Uncle Hansa to save me and bring meaning to Chinese characters, and through this process, explore parts of China I never knew existed. If there's one thing I've got to do before I die. It is that I have to go to Chenzhou. Chenzhou is an amazing city. The old architecture is still preserved, and the old ways are still preserved. Another thing I have to do before I die is teach my friend Adam to learn Chinese. Uncle Hansa. Oh yeah. Good morning. How are you doing? What do you think of the place? Oh, I, I think it's a really interesting city. People are nice. It's, it's a nice city. Yeah, this city was very hot in the old days, about a thousand years ago, during the Yuan and Song dynasties. And、uh, there were people from all over the world who came here. They spoke a hundred languages and from about ninety-eight countries, and they had many beliefs. And it also influenced the architecture to a huge degree. Well, I guess the character I should be focusing on here is Zhu, right?、Uh, yeah, Zhu. It means to live. In particular, it means where you live. On the left-hand side, you see a person, pronounced Ren. On the right, you see a phonetic symbol, Zhu, which means Lord. The phonetic was originally a pictograph of an oil lamp, pronounced Zhu. Many Chinese characters have part of the character that indicates the meaning, and a second part that indicates pronunciation. So let's、uh, take a look at how people live in this amazing place. If you really want to understand how life is in Chenzhou, you need to come to Xijie, which means the West Street. In this old street, we have a Buddhist temple, a Christian church. A mosque and a Guanyu temple, all adjacent to each other, which shows that this place is very tolerant. Adam and I met on West Street in Chenzhou, a street that retains many of the traditional buildings of the past. There are many shops. Almost everyone has an electric bike, so the scene on the street is very hectic. In order to better understand Chenzhou. We found Zheng Guoheng. He has lived here for 20 years and will explain some architectural features to us. First, we walked into a traditional house on West Street. You see, we have we see a lot of birds here. Do you know what they are? What? We see a lot of birds. Oh yes. Oh, these are swallows. Swallows, yes. They're swallows, and very interesting, very interesting feature of Chuanzhou's houses is that. At the roof ridge, at、oh. the end of the roof ridge. Yeah, swallowtail. Swallowtail. So that, that's part of the architecture you're saying. And part of the architecture, I will show you later. Okay, great. And this swallowtails, you know, it, it has a metaphor.、Mm -hmm. uh, the metaphor it means that、um, it represents home. It、mm -hmm. represents a nest. Oh. Aww. That always expecting the family member to be re reunited. Yeah.、Oh. Always coming back. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting time in this world because I haven't been, you know, I haven't seen my family in, since、um, 2019 at this point, and 
not because I don't love them or anything. It's just I can't get back home, get back to my Gushong. Yeah, it's a it's a nice image though. The, it's the little swallow wants to go home. <laughs> it's extremely different, absolutely extremely different now, because throughout all of history, in 2000, I had left my home. Mm -hmm. I had graduated for 40, uh, let's see, 30 years, and I had lost all contact with Medford. But because of the internet, I regained contact with all the people with many of my uh, childhood friends, this would have been impossible yeah. in any time in history right. except for the past 20 years. Mm. And so the people here, you know, they go off to the Philippines, they come back 50 years later. There's a famous Chinese poem, Xu Xu Lai, in Cantonese, Xu Xu Lei Ga Lo Dai Wei Hong Yang Mo Gai Bin Mo Choi Yi Tong Song Gin Bok Song Si Xu Man Ho Chong Ho Chu Lai it means when he was young mm. and he comes back to his hometown and his hair has turned white but the people the children in the town run around and they say who is this stranger the language has not changed mm -hmm. but the people don't recognize him so this is the way it was was for thousands of years you're right yeah if I translate from Cantonese I have to think about it in Mandarin Xiao Xiao Li Jiao Right. That's amazing that you recite it in Cantonese. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, making me homesick a little bit. That's that is what I thought the poem really touched me touched me. There are many beautiful patterns in the front hall of the house. And the owner hopes that these patterns will bring good luck to the family. This is, so this is the beginning of the family quarters. What is, what would be this area here? Is this like, um, there's, there's, there's like uh, buildings mm -hmm. here, or right here, there's a door. Are these like servants would work here, like live here or something? But the or? servants would be living in the front, the very front. Yeah. And, and, and also in the side houses. Okay. And this is where the I'm masters really would be living in the center ah. chambers. Because the the house, the whole complex, is built according to a center axis. Mm -hmm. So the center, the, the rooms, the chambers, are located arranged in the center axis would be the master rooms, and the main living rooms and etc. And the side, like uh, in the very front room, and the side rooms are for the servants, and also function uh, for like daily uses such as kitchens, the storage. It would be arranged on, on sides. Yeah, I got one more question about the roof here. You're talking about the, the swallowtails. Now, when I was looking at any old homes that are supposed to be from like either important people or government officials, or they would always have, instead of these swallowtails, they would have like little gargoyles or like, yeah. and the number of gargoyles would represent how important the person was, but they don't like see like. Yeah, yeah, at all, right? You, so, you're right, because those kind of animals yeah. and are only applied, or only used in official buildings. Okay. Or, so that would still or, or happen temples. here? It's, it is still happening okay. here. If you go to temples uh, mm. of certain higher, you know, standard architecture buildings, and, and of course, according to the ancient rules, in, in terms of the, the architectural rules, and they will have this kind of animals and auspicious animals on top right. of the ridge, such as the royal family, uh, palace, the mm. royal palace or, or, or temples, for worshipping, but this is a residence. Right, right, okay, I get uh, it. For, for, for regular people, for common people. So, only swallowtails. And, and uh, what do you think, that, is the tree a pomegranate tree? It looks like those are pomegranate fruits, or what is that, I think? Oh, oh. you noticed, yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. And do you know what does it represent? Pomegranates, I know that they got, it's good antioxidants. Because of the help. seeds, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which means the more children, the better. Hey, not too bad, huh, Uncle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I got one of them exactly. right. Exactly, you're right. Oh, yeah. what, now, what that, there's a and, square and over there, too, with a line through it. What, what was that? that? Right there at the, in the far right. Yeah, what is that? What it's is a that? book. A book? Yeah, it uh -huh. uh, means, means lecture, literature. Mm. This is a book? This, that is a book. Oh. Uh-huh. And uh, this kind of flute, and also uh, you would 
probably see pumpkins as well. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They're all fixtured with a lot of seeds inside. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So which means, you know, bring prosperity. a lot of prosperity and a lot of children to the family. Mm -hmm. What is that? It looks like a snail. It's got a Chinese character on it. What is it? What is my Well, on? actually, if I was looking at it, I think it looks like a snail too. <laughs> but it has the Chinese character for moon. So if you think about it, it's a moon behind a cloud. What is significant about a moon? Why would why is that? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Actually, if you lived in ancient times, mm -hmm. you would see the moon every night. And the moon would be very important to you because it would tell the time the lunar the calendar, month, right? The that's lunar what they, calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. And these days in Beijing, you can't even hardly see the moon. Right. That's why I couldn't recognize it. Yeah. What's <laughs> that object? Yeah. Oh, a moon? I've heard of those things. Yes. <laughs> After walking into the courtyard, we first noticed the door beam above the door. I was just noticing there's like a, looks like a, a little divot here. Is this like a, for a drain? What is this? Well, this is a very interesting thing that mm. a lot of people don't know about ancient houses. Mm. We are in southern China. It's very hot here in the summertime. And you'll notice that... It's hot in November, man. <laughs> we're in a living room. We're in a living room. But all of the drains, all of the roofs, they drain into the living room. Mm. And we have here that, that it would be a pool if it was raining. Right, right, right. And this is air conditioning system. They didn't have electricity or air conditioning. The water would drain in here, mm -hmm. and then it would evaporate, and it would keep the living room area cool in the summertime. Mm -hmm. That's why it's all we're kind of set in. Yeah, it's set in. So mm -hmm. this is, would be Pure. like cool. Sometimes, sometimes this is being you know full of water. Yeah, reach your ankle oh. sometimes. But um, yes, it's a draining system, but also a cooling system. Mainly a cooling system. Mainly a cooling system. Yeah. Uh, in fact, actually, it doesn't drain because it evaporates. Right. And there's another interesting thing. Uh, these windows out here, they have vertical bars. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a little while, I'll explain the word for window. But you see these windows here? Mm -hmm. They yeah. have ornate, they have bars to keep the criminals out, to keep the thieves out. Right. But they are not vertical bars. They are usually mm -hmm. fancy bars. Yeah. If and it was a, a simple all house. Kind of patterns. Yeah, if it was a simple house, it would just be bars going mm -hmm. uh, diagonally. Mm -hmm. And you see these windows here, mm -hmm. you see they're much more complex. Oh. It looks uh, like uh, a coin shape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but in, in a while, I'll explain the mm -hmm. uh, character for windows. Mm -hmm. And we do have a lot of these kind of uh, windows in various patterns. Yeah. And that's kind of wisdom that being adopted yeah, this into is a very the fancy pattern. Uh -huh. The ancient characters that bars would go diagonal. Mm -hmm. Right. And also, I would like to show you about this. This is the the house that is the, the main living room is built with timbers and you may notice the it's quite a typical quite a typical beam and pillar and bracket system and uh, it is called the, the tenon and mortise work and not usually especially in ancient houses no uh, nails would be applied, mm -hmm. but so mainly from the motives. But yet, we have the, the word nail, ding, mm -hmm. ding, goes back 3,500 years. So, so how do we explain that word? Uh, <laughs> That's a ding. Yeah. Well, you can a ding. You where is that? Where, the, where the pillar comes through, where the beam comes through the uh, yeah, pillar, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is the original ding. Yes, but yes, made of wood yes, instead of like a peg. iron. And if we look at the ancient character, we will see two round, two. Uh, uh -huh. uh, it's actually a picture of this. Right. So in ancient times, the the ten and the mortise system would be using everything. The nails, nailing system, yes. but the right. but uh, a the nail material would be, be a nail would be a hole, a right. hole in some wood and. A uh, piece of wood to, to hold join it together. To join together. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're, I can see uh, everything's. It's all joints. They're all being carved and inlaid into one another. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's being like hammered yeah. into place. Right. Yeah. That takes some craftsmanship. So, as you may see, this is a timber-framed uh, living room, and the timber-framed a lot of beams and bracket system, and also the pillars and. 
probably you would like to explain to us well, about here, the liang. Here, here we have a beam. We have all kinds of beams in Chinese. We have man liang. The word for beam is liang. If we look at the character, we see on the side a shui, which is water. And on the bottom, we have a mu, which is uh, wood. And then up on the upper right-hand corner, we have a character that's actually from the character for knife. Mm. And the original meaning was a beam across a river or a small bridge. Uh, you have the knife that, or axe that cuts the wood uh, that you can put over the water and make mm -hmm. a bridge. So that's the original logic of the word yeah. Wow, excellent. To cut the timbers into the frame, uh, to, into the shape, knitted shape. Uh, well, to cut the, to cut the tree mm -hmm. into, oh, to cut a tree into, into a timber. To, into a timber. Uh, so, Adam, this is a door. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> in Chinese, we have several words that mean to close and to lock. We have shuang and guan bi. Usually we say guan bi, which means guan to bi. shut, shut the door. But these are two different characters. And this door is shut and yeah. it's locked. This is B. B. If we look at the ancient characters, we will see the door splits here and there are two shuang. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, if we look at the ancient characters, we'll, if we see Guan B, this will be one kind. This will be the character B. Uh, sometimes we only have one of these characters, one of these uh, boards here. Okay. And that would be the character shuang. And, some, and we have another kind of door that bolts in the bottom. Mm -hmm. That would be guan. Guan, okay. Yeah. So, like, uh, oh, I, this shows my, I'm trying to remember my stuff. I thought like a square like this meant like an opening. It could be also like a cave. Oh, you I mean for Chinese characters? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we have jing, which means well. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Um, but this, but you're saying that, but but uh, B, or, um, that that is represented as shut. Yeah, the, yeah. In, in the modern character, you can't see it. Right. In the modern character, oh. there's a tie. Mm. But if we look at the ancient character, the tie gets changed into two lines, and the, those two lines are represent the lock. Represent the locks. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So when you look at the modern character, you can't. Unless you know where it came from, mm -hmm. you can't immediately tell. Yeah. But if you see the picture doesn't help. <laughs> well, if you see the one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. then you can see how the modern character comes about. Right, the evolve. Yeah. The process of evolve. Yeah, evolution. Yeah. Evolution. Well, also, because they probably don't. How many doors are like this nowadays, too? Right. Well, so, yeah, but so. the, the characters came from thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. After visiting some local dwellings. We decided to continue to learn more about the decorations in the homes of the locals, which means porcelain. Uh, Uncle Hansa, where are we going? Uh, we're going to a place called Fujian Dahua. It's a porcelain factory, and they have been using fire kilns there for 800 years. Fire kilns? Wait, that sounds like a lot of pollution. Do they still use fire kilns? No, actually, What's lately they've updated it greatly so it doesn't pollute the atmosphere. Cool. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Let's do, let's do it. <laughs> That's Yoda. Laid out of porcelain, I am. Right? You know her uh, from uh, Star Wars, right? Interesting. So, where do you sell these uh, ceramic pieces? We sell it for 100 more countries. 100 more countries uh, around the world. Mr. Jung was the person in charge, and he was the man who took us through the factory. We saw a lot of porcelain, which was to be exported to more than 100 countries worldwide. The porcelain from here has been well known all over the world for centuries. They don't make any colors to this because it's already perfectly white. It's perfect. Yes. This is high quality white porcelain. Modern firing methods use more environmentally friendly natural gas and electricity to produce the heat. In other respects, they still insist on manual methods. 
The making of a piece of porcelain is not as simple as it looks. There were a lot of female workers in the factory. Adam and I cleaned some white porcelain teapots. You have to clean them very carefully before they can be fired. Uh, this kind of porcelain does not need to be colored. It is simple and beautiful without any impurities. During the process, Adam and I both broke an unfinished teapot. You really have to be careful when working with the unfinished porcelain. I broke it. No, oh, okay. So, did you break yours? No. <laughs> no, I'm a good student. <laughs> no, no. You have to be careful. Yes, don't hold it by the handle. Do I dare try again or am I fired? You gonna give me one more shot? Okay, don't, come on, I got a wife and two kids at home. I need this job, okay? I feel, I'm, I'm scared because it's very fragile right now. It's a, and I want to be a good, I want to be a good worker. Oh, man. Mm, it's beautiful. Now, Uncle Hanzo, what is the character for porcelain? The character for tsu. On the top, you have a character that is pronounced tsu. That's the pronunciation. On the right-hand side, you have a chen. And on the left-hand side, you have two dots. That's called a two-dot water. And on the bottom, you have a wa. If you want to make a picture, a pictograph of some porcelain or some uh, ceramics, the wa is a type of tile that they put on the roof. And it, it would go over this way, and then under, and then over, and then under. Right, like tiles, roof tiles. Okay. Well, cool. After leaving the porcelain factory, we happened upon some local performers of traditional Minnan music called Minying. They were playing in a small open front stall facing the street with several dozen chairs on the street and many people watching. It is hard to find Nanying anymore. It reminded me of when I first heard it 50 years ago. Nanying is sung and played using original Chinese pentatonic music scale. It is sung in Minnan dialect, which is spoken in Taiwan and southern Fujian. Nanying originated in the Tang dynasty and evolved during the Song and later dynasties. It uses the Gu Zheng, the Yehu, the Dong Xiao musical instruments and uses a clapper to keep the rhythm. Before the 1920s, Nanying was mainly sung by the blind. In Quanzhou, there are still many people who appreciate the old form of music. After watching the Nanying performance, we decided to go to a fishing port a hundred kilometers away. You should know that the coastal city of Quanzhou has a long and winding coastline, and the sea is covered with thousands of boats. We met Mr. Tsai, a local fisherman who has been working the sea for 20 years. He decided to take us out to sea, but before going out to sea, he took us to a temple. We burned incense and knelt in front of the gods and asked them for protection on our trip out to sea. We bowed three times and raised the incense to the gods. Now we will be safe. Uncle Hans, what, what, is, what are these characters? What do they mean? The first character, Do, means a dipper. It refers to the Big Dipper or oh, the Little it's Dipper. constellations. Yes. And we have something called the Celestial North Pole. Right, right, right. Uh, Tencho Beiji. And so it's, it's beautiful. The second word is beautiful because you can look at these stars and you can tell where you are at night. Yeah. So the... That's the, how they used to do it. Yeah, so that's how they used to do it. And Gong is, means a temple. 
So it's the, so the temple of the Domain. Uh, so the, the beautiful Dome. North Star, the beautiful North Star Temple. Which would be what would protect the sailor or fisherman at sea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. To be so, able that to that, so they don't get lost at sea. It's like a secret message in the sky to help yes. the, the yes. sailors. Yeah. Oh, cool. The coastline of Chenzhou is tortuous and long, and the area is filled with tens of thousands of cargo ships. Mr. Tsai has spent half of his life on the sea. The cabins they lived in were very small, and the aisles were very narrow. They could only accommodate one person. On the side were small beds with sliding doors. The doors were to keep out the sound. The kitchen is also very simple, and they usually just cooked some vegetables and seafood. Mr. Tsai takes the sea as his home most of the time. They work very hard. They often go out for long periods, and it can be very dangerous. They sometimes encounter typhoons and are never sure what they will face. He told us that he missed his home on land when he was at sea, and he missed the sea when he was at home. Adam and I are very moved and hope he will be safe. There's a song in Chinese. It roughly translates, if you strive, then you will win. This song from the 1980s embodies the spirit of the Mingnan people who love to fight and inspires people not to be afraid and to move forward bravely even if they encounter difficulties. Mr. Tsai sang this song for us. Its lyrics are to the effect Life is like waves on a sea. Sometimes it raises and falls, sometimes good luck, sometimes bad luck. The most important thing is to love to fight to win. The people of Chenzhou understand this, and although they may go far, they always return home, and their home represents everything, the entire world. In the ancient and modern form of the character jia, meaning home, we can see what appears to be a pig inside a house. Ancient Chinese lived in houses off the ground and the pigs lived under the house. So this is the origin of the character meaning house, family, and home. It happened to be the birthday of Mr. Tsai's daughter. Mr. Tsai took us to his home. His daughter was very nice. We celebrated her birthday. When we saw the whole family being happy together, I understood the definition of home. What is a home? What is the difference between a home and a house? Some of us are destined to live in great mansions. Some of us are destined to live in poor conditions. But it's not the conditions that we live in. It is the people we live with. It is the family, it is the friends that make life worth living. It is the family, it is the friends that make a house a home. Thanks for listening to this episode of Stories of Chinese Characters, Season 2. I'm Uncle Han Zi. If you like the show, please give us a rating or a review. You can find out more at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and most other major podcast platforms. Or at our website, radio.cgtn.com. See you next time.